Somebody said, this looks like a little bit heaven. But I said, it's completely like a heaven. <laughs> um, tonight, I'm going to share about the brief Korean Christian history. It's really brief. And what happened in Korea, and also I'm talking about the uh, uh, Korean American people in this United States. And lastly, I want to explain about our church. <clears throat> the Korea, as you know, divided in two uh, body, North and South. In South Korea, we have 40 million populations. And North Korea, 20 million people's population. Altogether, uh, 60 million people are living in Korean Peninsula. In South Korea, we have 25,000 churches, and we have 11 million, around 11 million Christians. That means almost more than a quarter of whole population. And as you know, the most biggest church in this world, if we count 20 most mega church, I mean uh, most, uh, the biggest church in this world, the Korea, we have half of them. The most the biggest church in this world is in Korea, in Seoul. And the most biggest Presbyterian church is in Seoul. And the most biggest Methodist church is in Seoul. And the most biggest Pentecostal church is in Seoul. From the 20 most biggest church, more than 10 churches in Seoul. And the Korea, on this time, at this moment, 7,000 missionaries all around the world. I heard one hour ago, 47 countries around this world, we send the missionaries. And maybe you are really wondered about the rapid growing of Christianity in Korea. We have only 100 years Christian history, but God richly blessed this country and tremendously God worked on our country. The beginning of the Protestant, Protestant church in Korea is 1884, exactly 1884, September 20. The first Protestant missionaries, his name was Horace Allen. Horace Allen landed in Korean Peninsula. He was sent by 
the United Presbyterian Church in USA. That means now it's PCUSA. By the denomination PCUSA, we have first missionaries Horace Allen in Korea. And at that time, the king, the name was Gojong. The king Gojong, he had a deep and profound friendship with this Alain, and he made him as his king's doctor. Doctor who take care of the, you know, king's family. Because of that favor, the Christianity could spread out easily. In 1859, we have two famous missionaries in Korea who received two. One was Horace Under Underwood. Horace Underwood. He trained in New Brunswick Seminary. And the other was Henny Appenzeller. He also trained in Drew University. One was missionaries from Presbyterian, and the other was missionary of Methodist. So two families landed together. And from that very moment, Korea was evangelized. The East Coast was the area of Methodist, and the other coast, the mainland, was covered by the Presbyterian missionaries. So that's the reason why the East Coast is, the Methodist is very strong in East Coast. And the other part is Presbyterian is very, very strong. The main reason the Korean Christianity is so rapidly growing and be strong, we have several reasons. The first reason is we have very, very good missionaries. They were well equipped and well trained and highly educated and highly motivated missionaries. Because of their guidance and their training, we could have a very sound and strong foundation to start our Christianity in Korea. And second reason was the prepared condition to receive the gospel. At that time, the Korea didn't have any national religion. Even though we have Confuciusism and Buddhism and shamanism, and so many religions, but we don't have any national religion. That's the easy culture the Christian can be planted. And moreover, at that time, the career was in very in the difficult situation, I mean internationally, the big power, between the big power, Korea was struggled. 
Japan, and China, and Russia. They were superpower at that time. So between these superpower, Korea was struggled for the existence. That's the reason why we could have Christianity so easily. And also, the king of the Korea, he had a great favor to the Christianity, especially through missionary Alain. And moreover, the Korea doesn't have any uh, experience of colonization like the other country. Because of the European, European colonization, a lot of Asian you know, country, they rejected and they had some kind of hostility about the you know, European imperialism and, and European religion, I mean Christian. Most of the Asian countries, they are really rejected. But Korea, we don't have any experience of colonization. So easily we receive the Christianity. Because of this kind of premature condition, the Korea easily received the gospel. And also, the great reason of the growth of Korean church is the severe persecution. We had two major severe persecution. The first one was Japanese colonization. Japan colonized the Korea, and they had a regime of 36 years. During 36 years, a lot of Christian leaders, a lot of Korean Christian leaders were slayed and martyred. And the churches crashed, and people were abandoned, their life, their home, their family, and even church. We saw and rightful the Japanese people demolished the Korean churches because of that a lot of blood was shedded on the Korean soil because of that blood because of that precious blood now we have strong churches. And after that, we had another persecution. That's the famous Korean War. Because of the Korean War, all the country demolished and people scattered around. And a lot of churches were destroyed. The leaders shot and cut and imprisoned. And went to death. Still we are remembering it. And the other, the major fact of Korean church growth is 
prayer movement. When the Korean Christianity began, our ancestor they laid precious stone of Christian tradition. As you see, the speaker on this platform, now they take off their shoes here. Maybe you will wonder about that. But this is Korean Christian tradition. It just a form of piety and form of faith. Like the Bible teaches us. By taking up our shoes, even though it is just a form, but that's our expression of our heart. Like that, our Christian ancestor, they laid a tremendous, beautiful tradition, Christian tradition, especially prayer movement. At 4.30 in the morning, every Christian in the Korea, they wake up. 4.30 and they gathered in the church floor and we pray and pray and pray. In the morning, we pray for our churches and for our church leaders and for the evangelism and for the missionaries and for the churches in the world. Even we are in the United States, most of the Korean churches, they have the prayer meeting in the morning, early in the morning, sometimes at five, sometimes at six. And in Korea, inevitably, they are 430. Sometimes we have Fasting prayer. For 40 days, fasting 40 days, like Moses. One of my friend, minister in this New York City, he had four times 40 day fasting prayer. But still he's alive. And he's stronger than before. And he's planning one more time 40 days fasting prayer. Like that, we gathering our whole spiritual energy print to our prayer. Because we can do nothing, but God can do everything. Yeah. So this because of this powerful prayer movement, God richly blessed our country and our churches. So, from 1970, the Korean church rapidly growing like the grass after the rain. As you heard, when we had the Billy Graham crusade 1974, More than one million people gathered together in Yoi 
square. One million people. One million people. And next year, X, Explo 74, we had more than two million people gathered together. And we worship God, and we praise God, and we pray together. And the whole land of soul is shaked. Still, I and all NYPC congregation members still rely on the prayer. It's the most powerful weapon we have. Now, 5.5 million Korean people are scattered around in this world. 140 countries we scattered around. Majorly in the United States and in China and in Japan and also in old Russian area. In the United States, we have around 2 million Korean American people. And we have 3,500 churches in this North America. In New York City, in greater New York area, 40,000, uh, 400,000 Korean people are living around here, and 600 Korean churches. As you see, the immigrant people, as the immigrant people, we have very hard time. Because of language barrier and culture gap, we experience a really hard time. Sometimes, because of misunderstanding, People are imprisoned, and people were discriminated. We couldn't get our basic benefit from this society. But we Christian, even though we don't have our own home. I mean, we don't have our own house, or we don't have our own store. But before that, we try to build our God's house first. Like the American ancestor in Plymouth time. Still, most of Korean immigrant people, because of short history of our immigration, still we are not under stable position. So people are living, pe people are seeking their living, their job, and they are trying to seek better life and struggling. 
still they are experiencing one day life. So in the morning, they're asking God, oh God, help me for today, even one day. And returning from their job before they are sleeping, we ask God, oh thank God for keeping me for this day. Still we are living one day by one day. Because our life is so unstable, the church is the center of our life and the church is the center of our faith and our Christian activity. So we are always gathering here with great energy and great expectation and with great love and great diligence. This is like our home. This Korean church, this NYPC New York Presbyterian Church, this church established 1970. That means we have 30 years history. This church began with 10 adults and two children. beginning with 12 people. At that time, the church was beginning in the living room of one of our congregational members. We didn't have any piano or organ. We didn't have any lectern. We didn't have any uh, instrument. We had nothing. But we could pray at that time. God's great grace People are gathered, and the church is growing day by day. Even though we try to pray in the morning, I mean five in the morning, but we didn't have any place to kneel down. So we asked God, Father, Give us place to pray freely. I have a dramatic testimony to share with you. I came in this state 1976. I majored, when I was in uh, college life, I majored English literature. I thought I could follow the lecture in the seminary. But reality is different. I couldn't listen at all. With great, with great diligence and with great heart, I sat down right before the lecturer 
and prepared note and prepared pencil and ready to write it down, but I couldn't hear anything. I experienced great frustration. I couldn't understood. So my heart was troubled and dismayed because of that. I prayed in the chapel in the evening with my friends we prayed and sometimes we shouted because my heart is burning at that time and next morning the chancellor called us what did you do last night in the chapel hall and we said we prayed what kind of prayer is that? <laughs> if you did one more time, you have to be prepared to default. So, we couldn't pray in the chapel hall anymore. So, I shut down my door in the room. So, kneel down and pray again. And I couldn't control my voice. And the boys raised it up. <laughs> and I was called again. <laughs> and the chancellor said, if you do it again, I really deported you. You will be deported. So, as the last chance, I went out to the grass, you know, went out to the ground, the seminary ground. This happened in Philadelphia. And I kneeled down again, and I asked the Lord, and nobody will listen, so I loudly asked God, <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. And hour later, there was some kind of sound. <laughs> and with the flashing light. <laughs> Somebody reported to police department. So, whenever we feel our heart is troubled and uh, anxious and frustrated, we need prayer because that's our only hope and that's the powerful pipeline from God. So we ask God give us the place to pray freely. The result of that prayer it is wonderful sanctuary. I don't want boasting or proud of just this building. I don't want to boast in this building because this building is nothing. This building is not church itself. All right. Come on. The gathering of Christian is the true church. Even though we have different color and different culture and different language, 
but still we are one in Christ and we are true church. NYPC has four visions. First, our church want to be a model church appeared in Acts chapter 2. Like the original Jerusalem church, like the Antioch church, we want to be that example because even though there are a lot of churches on this world, but so many churches, they are accused and they are trampled down by worldly people. We need to go back to the original church. We have to restore the example of true church. true church, we need a worship in truth and spirit. And to be a true church, we need a deep fellowship in love. And to be a true church, we need a biblical education. And to be a true church, we need, we have to live like the salt and light of this world. And to be a true church, we have to serve the Lord. And to be a true church, we have to evangelize our community. The second vision is to restore this New York City because so NYPC is not located in Los Angeles. <laughs> this church is right here in New York City. We have to understand why God located our church here. As you see, even though this New York City is the most biggest church in the world, or biggest city in the world, and most dynamic and vibrant church, uh, vibrant city in the world, and most powerful and most biggest populated, you know, city in the United States. But still, this city has a lot of problems and a lot of hurt. As you see, this is a perverse city. drug problem, and drinking problem, and gangster, problem of old people, problem of young people, and the family problem. The jail, and the hospital, Wherever we look at, there are so many problems we have to solve. We have to cure and we have to restore it with the gospel. And the third vision of our church is to training 10,000 people. 
thousand cars disciple. We want to train them. And the last vision is sending out 1,000 missionaries all around the world. Until this time, we sent out 21 missionaries. I don't know exactly when this is going to be completed, but before the second coming of our Lord, we're going to push it. <laughs> Most of our congregation, they are using Korean language. Our second generation, they are using more easily English language. So it is very hard to have a uh, same worship time, same service with them. So we have another service in Annex. We call them GFC, GFC. And they are serving God and worshiping and praising God with, uh, in English. And also we are outreaching this community. So around here, a lot of nationality they are joining now. You know, uh, Pakistan people, and Chinese people, and uh, Indian people, a lot of nationality, they are joining together. <laughs> and we have a pastor who take care of that congregational body, and they have very active and very live. Originally, we called our church Korean, uh, Korean Presbyterian Church of New York. We called that way. But from some time, we changed it New York Presbyterian Church because it's not for only Korean. And uh, the true identity of Christianity is international. Still, we have two more days. So, if you have time and chance, please join us and uh, we're going to share our spirit and our hospitality and our love together. And now, I'm introducing 